Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to BSC Limited FY24 Investor Conference Call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star than zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anand Raman, Head of Investor Relations. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Sago. Uh, good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining with us today. Uh, this is Anand from Investor Relations at BSE uh, to discuss BSE's earnings call for FY 2024. Uh, joining us on this call is the BSE's leadership team uh, consisting of Mr. Sundara Raman Ramamurthy, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Deepak Goel, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Samir Patil, Chief Business Officer, Ms. Kamala K. Chief Regulatory Officer, Mr. Girish Yoshi, Chief of Listing and Trading Development, and other members of our business, finance, and investor relations team. Uh, do note that this conference is being recorded. The transcript of this call, along with the earnings release and presentation, can be found in the Investor Relations section of the BAC India website. Uh, before we get started, I once again remind you that our remarks today may include overlooking statements. Any actual results may differ materially from those contemplated by these overlooking statements. And any overlooking statements that we make today on this call are based on assumptions and BSE assumes no obligation to update these statements as a result of new information or future events. With this, I will now request Mr. Sundar Raman Ramamurthy Managing Director and CEO to give a brief overview of the company's financial and business performance for the year FY 2024. Thanks, Anand. Good evening, everybody, and a warm welcome to all of our esteemed shareholders for joining the call today. It is with great pleasure that I stand before you today, having completed my first full financial year as the MD and CEO of BSC. This past year has been full of challenges, opportunities, and most importantly, a period of immense learning and growth for both me and the entire organization. But overall, I am happy to say that the last year has been crucial in laying the foundations for the future growth of BSC. There were several new highs and announcements for the Indian capital markets as well. The combined market capitalization of all listed stocks on BSC hit the rupees 400 lakh crore milestone for the first time ever owing to the buoyancy in the Indian economy and participation across the spectrum. When I joined BSC, registers, registered investors based on unique client code stood at 12.1 crores, which has since increased to 17.1 crores as on date, a growth of 41%. This is a testament to the growing confidence and interest in the capital markets, and it is our responsibility to help them navigate the financial landscape. As we witness a surge in investor registration I want to acknowledge a crucial aspect of our responsibility, 
which is investor education and investor protection. We have taken concrete steps to enhance and safeguard the ecosystem of Indian capital markets. The company, through its investor protection fund, was instrumental in conducting 13,780 investor awareness programs throughout the country the financial year 2023-24. We have also adopted to digital and social media as a means of spreading awareness as it is the trend seen amongst investors. As a part of digital strategy, BSC successfully made 11 videos on various topics related to securities market in Hindi language with the videos evolving around one common character called Mr. Mane. These Mr. Mane videos became very popular in short span of time with total views across social media and YouTube exceeding 10.75 crore views. We, also, we have also sent investor awareness messages with an embedded video through WhatsApp to over 4.5 crore active investors registered with BSC on various topics related to securities market. Moving on to some notable regulatory initiatives in the area of investor protection, the Investor Risk Reduction Access IRRA platform is an initiative conceptualized and implemented by market infrastructure institutions under the guidance of SEBI to reduce risks faced by investors in the eventuality of technical glitch or trading member end at both primary site and disaster recovery site. On the listing side, we streamlined the IPO listing process with introduction of T e plus day listing for IPOs. The faster turnaround time benefits both companies seeking to raise capital and investors eager to participate in new offerings. Coming back to the updates pertaining to the exchange, I am happy to share that DSC recorded its strongest year in its history with the record revenue of rupees 1,618 crores on a consolidated basis. We have successfully relaunched our index options segment and continue to improve its performance while also delivering strong results in our equities, mutual funds, and clearing and settlement business. We have also announced plans to launch new products and services to further strengthen our offerings. The investments we are making in our infrastructure will create an even stronger platform for long-term sustainable growth. I will now share some of the key financial numbers on a consolidated basis for the year ended March 31st, 2024 as compared to the previous year. For the first time in history, BSC Group revenue crossed Rs. 1,500 crores to reach a total revenue of rupees 1618 crores 
up 70% compared to the previous financial year. This growth is led by strong performance in transaction related income, treasury income from clearing and settlement services, and investment related income. Similarly, BSE's operational revenue has grown by 70% to rupees 1390 crores from rupees 815 crores. The net profit attributable to shareholders of the company, excluding CDSL stake sale, stands at rupees 411 crores from rupees 221 crores in the previous year, a growth of 86%. The operating EBITDA for FY24 stands at rupees 399.9 crores from rupees 197.4 crores last year with operating EBITDA margin expanding to 29% from 24% earlier. The net profit margin excluding CDSL sale stands such 25% as against 22% last year. The clearing and settlement operational revenues increased by 70% to rupees 126 crores from rupees 74 crores. Treasury income from clearing and settlement funds has increased by 121% to rupees 184 crores from rupees 83 crores. Other operating revenue, which includes data dissemination fee, training income, software income, has increased by 3% to rupees 91.7 crores from rupees 89.5 crores. Investment income increased by 85% to rupees 202.4 crores from rupees 109.3 crores. I also want to apprise you of two key factors that impacted our profitability. One is contribution to core SGF. BSE is clearing income. ICCL had to contribute an amount of rupees 91.7 crores for FY24 towards its equity and currency derivative segment, which is 67% higher compared to previous financial year. Second is clearing and settlement charges. As you know, these charges are a function of the fee levied on the clearing and settlement services provided by clearing corporations. BSC has incurred a cost of rupees 206.5 crores on a standalone basis compared to rupees 61.7 crores in the previous year. As many of you may be aware, BSC had received a letter from our market regulator, SEBI, dated 26th April 2024, with respect to differential regulatory fee for the past two periods along with applicable interest. We are currently looking into the matter and pending finalization of the outcome. Based on the prudence the company has provided in the current period an amount of rupees 170 crores towards differential regulatory fees. On back of these financial results, it is my pleasure to inform you that the Board of Directors of BSC Limited 
has recommended a final dividend of rupees 15 per equity share having a face value of rupees 2 for the financial year 2023-24 subject to the approval of shareholders in the ensuing annual general meeting. The total payout with the dividend payout ratio of 71.3% of the current year profits would be rupees 206 crores on a standalone basis. I would now like to share updates pertaining to business. For specific numbers pertaining to turnover, kindly refer to the BSE website and the investor presentation. Let me start by covering our primary market segment. BSE platforms continue to remain the preferred choice by Indian companies to raise capital by enabling issuers to raise rupees 21.3 lakh crores by means of equity, debt, bonds, commercial papers, etc. Moving on to our trading segment. On the 15th of May next week, we will mark one year since the relaunch of index derivatives segment. This relaunch was a watershed moment for BSC and I am incredibly pleased of what we have achieved collectively in the past year. In less than one year, BSC ranks second amongst exchanges globally and our flagship index, Sensex, now ranks fourth in terms of derivatives contracts traded according to the data published by the Futures Industry Association, FIA. More importantly, BSC earned rupees 176 crores from this segment despite having promotional offerings of lower transaction charges of rupees 500 per crore of premium for bank kicks and farley contracts. Further, BSC has implemented a new fee structure for Sensex and bank kicks options contract which will be effective from 13th May 2024. It also gives me pleasure to inform you that Sensex derivative is continuing to grow and it broke its own record on 3rd May 2024 when more than 52 crores contracts traded representing a notional turnover of over rupees 388 lakh crores and a premium turnover of rupees 30,750 crores. The Bankex contracts has also generated significant interest since its expiry date change to Monday from October 16, 2023 by creating a new record with 19 core contracts traded representing a notional turnover of rupees 160 lakh crores. Since relaunch, more than 400 members have traded DSC derivatives representing around 36 lakh active clients. In my last earnings call speech, I had announced regarding our strategic plan with respect to the expansion of core data center and I am happy to update that we have completed phase one of our expansion allowing us to accommodate more clients and ensure unmatched service continuity.
With this price revision as mentioned earlier, we will be able to ensure continued investments in product innovation and necessary technology upgrades for the trading systems and the data center capacity. BSC had recently announced its foray into single stock derivative space. Effective 1st July 2024, all stock derivatives contracts at BSC will expire on the second Thursday of the month. This is in line with our strategy to improve our product suite to complement the existing product offerings available in the market. Moving on to our mutual fund distribution segment, BSC Star MS delivered yet another year of record revenues and performance, up 63% year on year to reach rupees 128 crores. The total number of transactions processed by BSC Star MF grew by 55% to reach 41.1 crore transactions in FY24 and 26 from 26.5 crores in the previous year. On an average, the platform processed 3.4 crore transactions per month in FY 2024 as compared to 2.2 crores in FY 2023. The platform also processed a new high of 4.73 crore transactions in April 2024. Given the growth, we are going to continue investing in Star MS and improve it in terms of scalability, functionality, and order processing and introduce a new platform called Star MF 2.0 next quarter, that is, Quarter 2, FY2025. Moving on to our subsidiary businesses now. I also would like to update that S&P Dow Jones Indices LLC is in discussion with DSC for divestment of its equity stake in Asia Index Private Limited, a 50-50 joint venture with BSC. This will be an important area of focus in the coming years, given the growth of passive investments in India. The BSC group directly or via subsidiaries also has its presence in other related business, including India International Exchange, India INX, BSE's exchange at Gap City, BSC EPIX, the Hindustan Power Exchange, BSE's e-agricultural markets, BEAM, Spot Platform for Trading Commodities, and BSC Administration in Services Limited, Basel. BSC is committed to these new areas and is constantly working with partners for the growth of these businesses. As we move forward, we see that there is a significant opportunity to continue to expand and evolve these businesses. Looking back at the last one year, I am happy to say that we have done well in our objective of a vibrant trading platform. We have created a strong portfolio of businesses, a rapid pace of innovation, and a strategy that is well understood. Now, it's time to widen and deepen our existing product offerings, and we feel that we are on the right track. With these updates, I now hand over the call back to Anand. Oh, thank you so much, sir, for the brief update. Uh, I would now like to uh, uh, throw the floor open for question and answers. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Pranav Tucker from who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Mr. Pranav, your line is unmuted. You can please proceed with your question. As there is no response from the line of the current participant, we'll move on to our next question. Our next question is from the line of Narayanan R from Fintech Research. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Thanks for taking the question. Uh, so there used to be a slide which uh, was there in your previous investor decks where you had uh, given market share across your segments. Uh, that doesn't seem to be there in the current uh, release. So I just wanted to get a sense of why it has stopped and what was what is the what is the market share in uh, futures uh, and options uh, for this quarter and how do you measure it? Similarly, what's your market share for the star MF in Q4? Okay. Uh, uh, first of all, thanks very much for the question, uh, Narayananji. As I always say, in respect of derivatives, we do not measure the market share at BNC in the normal way in which the market measures it. The reason is the products are different. In the case of cash equities, we can talk about market share. In the case of uh, the derivatives, it's very difficult to talk about market share. Our goal has always been that what we do in terms of number of members, number of investors, and the number of foreign participants who trade, there you know the numbers are available in our presentation. And also, right. our volumes are available regularly in our website. In case you would like to compare it as a market share, it will be easier for you to do. But we are measuring our vibrance in terms of how much we are extending. Today we have around 400 members. We always like to grow to 500, 600 members. Today we have around 3,000, uh, some 3 million uh, uh, UCCs are trading with us. We always aspire for a bigger number there. Today we have around 100 SDIs. We want to scale it up to at least 200 to 50 SDIs. Today we had only two index products. Now we are slowly making our entrance to stock derivatives. We want to get into more products. Today, uh, a few weeks before or a few months before, only our near month expiry was liquid. Now that is slowly getting into the next week and next month as well. This is the way we are measuring our progress. Got it. So the market share that you used to disclose, that was based on what uh, in the past? Uh, uh, sir, uh, it was based on notional turnover uh, for the uh, derivatives okay. market. Yeah. Okay, got it, got it. Uh, and in BSE Star, uh, what where, what was the market share in Q4? Uh, we continue to have the same type of a market share of around 85-90%. Okay, got it. Got it. And uh, just one follow-up on this BSE Star MF 2.0 that you spoke about. Uh, what are the, I mean, what what are the key differences between the current platform and uh, the one that we are planning to launch? And how does it, uh, how is it proposing to help us? Yeah. Yeah. So the 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 if you if you will recall, the mutual fund industry underwent lot of uh, regulatory changes and has been evolving over a period of time. So when you start with the code and we start upgrading it with new, new changes happening, it's always important in order to ensure the following things, namely functionality, features, resilience, governance, sustainability, and growth. We need to always have a relook into whatever codes we have written and rewrite the platform 
so that we can reinvent and start from the beginning. So this is a modular platform which helps in scaling up different parts differently and addresses all the areas which I just mentioned in terms of functionality and other things in this platform. That is what is the major change. So it will be very helpful for the market in providing stability and functionality for growth. Got it. Uh, thanks. That's it from my side. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prayesh Jain from Modila Loswal. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Am I audible? Yeah, you are. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. So, firstly, on uh, you know, if I look at your uh, active customer base, you mentioned it's about 3 million, and for the other player also it's about 4 million. You know, so, I think a large portion of that has been kind of penetration has been reached. Uh, you know, do you think that, you know, the ticket size is different and we can still have uh, higher growth there? Uh, so, possibly, and that's the first question. Um, I'll ask the second one after that. So, yes, we feel that there could be further growth in uh, because of multiple reasons. Because what we find is there is a good amount of significant interest from the institutional players in equities derivatives who are coming in. That is one part. And even with these 3 million players, what we are talking about, uh, while the number may be looking good, the, the way in which we are talking about deepening and widening and broadening, what we are talking about in terms of futures volume, next to next month, next to month, all that, there is a long way to go. That is why we feel that we should extend the customer base to such of those people who have a longer time horizon and therefore the product will be deepened and broadened. Uh, so secondly, on the on the steady letter and the follow up price hike, uh, is that you know completely compensating for the for the incremental charges? Firstly, that and secondly, you know you mentioned that you will be kind of representing to the uh, regulator or uh, you will be considering your options on that. If is there any possibility of a reversal there? And if there is, then uh, you know would you cut back the prices? Uh, see, we have uh, we have uh, brought the prices uh, of the transaction charges of DSC on par with what is the market's existing uh, charges now. Uh, in a way, the, the if you look at the SEBI letter, yes, we have received a letter on April 26, 2024, wherein we are informed that the SEBI turnover fee should be computed based on uh, the notional value and not on premium. And uh, the, it just should be done for the last 18 years. It clearly predates my uh, coming into BSC. I'm just 15 months, 16 months old here. And this, this topic is about 18 years. When I look back at the, uh, the records that are available with BSC, based on expert opinion taken from time to time, BSC has been paying it based on premium and not on national turnover. Now that the letter has come, uh, we will be requesting and representing and submitting and uh, appealing to the regulators to reconsider this decision and uh, we are very hopeful that we will be heard by the regulator. So that is our request to the regulator. And uh, if it has happened, it will be really good. Uh, and you also will know that one another major area which is eating away all the gains that we are making is the charges made by the other clearing corporation, which is very huge, because of which a significant part of our earnings are going towards the clearing and settlement charges. We are also appealing that uh, that should be reviewed and it should be reduced. So we hope that this happens, which will help us to get some profit so that we can improve more and more in creation of infrastructure and facilities for the market participants. Okay. And so lastly, you know, you know what new index products uh, you think you can bring on and, uh, uh, you know, your competitor has also launched a new contract now. Um, so, you know, whether any such index contract is something that you're looking forward to launch, uh, uh, that would be uh, helpful. Thanks. Uh, no, it's a very, very interesting and important question that you are asking us. Uh, yes, our products are just, if you look at it, uh, Sagar, 
the the is the the uh, the uh, sensex derivative is just one year old going to become one year old and bankex derivative is uh, yet to become uh, even six months old uh, we are uh, so it is too early to be just going on introducing products nevertheless based on market demand we have introduced stock derivatives as you know which will be a monthly product but expiring in the mid month so similarly we have quite a few product ideas we are developing on every one of those ideas and sure we will be coming with one behind the other as and when we feel the product that we are introduced are going on stabilizing if you recall i have always been telling that once our product stabilizes we will always come out with a new product we feel that by and large sensex and bankex are stabilizing now therefore we have come with the stock product once we feel that the stock products are going to stabilize we'll come out with more products as we have a lot of ideas there so that also can i keep in one more just you know what is your view on the uh, co location uh, revenues and how should we think about this from fi 25 and 26 perspective and whether these would be profit contributors uh, in these years yeah, that's it from my side thank you so one request from my side there is a big queue if every person could restrict just to two questions it will be helpful uh, i understand the enthusiasm i really appreciate it so let this be the last caller who is asking four questions otherwise everybody if they could restrict it to two questions it will be we will be highly obliged as far as collocation is concerned we feel that it is a important part and parcel of developing deepening and widening the market base yes you may know that we started with around 100 racks when we just started the derivative segment all those 100 racks have consumed the phase one of our expansion we had undertaken and i am happy to say that it is complete and we are in the process of allocating those racks and as and when demand comes we will be building more and more collocation to cater to the market needs we are here to serve the market as market infrastructure intermediaries we will be very conscious of it and we will fulfill our duties thank you so much thank you ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference please restrict your questions to two per participant if you have a follow up question you can rejoin the queue the next question is from the line of devesh agrawal from iifl securities please go ahead Uh, good evening, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is, sir, uh, the tariff increase that you are talking about uh, will be effective from May 13th. Now, uh, this is in uh, uh, basically uh, for the increase in the regulatory cost that we have seen, we had to take this. Uh, otherwise, earlier we wanted to be a more gradual in terms of tariff increase. So, my question here is, uh, do you expect any impact on the volumes because of this tariff increase, given that? Uh, this is a, uh, the exchange fee is a significant part of the option trading cost. Uh, I am not uh, so. Uh, you are right in telling that um, we have increased the tariff from May 13. Uh, see, this is very essential for us to increase the cost at this point of time because the clearing and settlement costs are already very high, and there is an increase in the heavy turnover fee as well. so we have gone ahead and do this so that we are able to break even and able to cater to the increasing needs of provision of infrastructure so we have done that and therefore we feel that it is a it was an essential element in the product of growing the market but uh, no sense in terms of uh, likely impact on the volume or too early to talk about it we it will be the Market forces which will decide. Uh, I am sure I will not be able to say how the market will decide. Sure. And so my our feeling is, is, our feeling is, the charges are in line with what the market is already paying. So we have not changed it in any fashion whatsoever. It was at a discount earlier, a significant discount. We have now brought it on par. Right, sir. And so my second question would be. Uh, in terms of this 85 crore of clearing and settlement cost that you have paid, uh, how much of that would be for equity options, and of that, how much is paid to NSE? I do not know where you are getting the number 85 crores. 
significant portion again goes to nsc around the 63 crores or 64 crores has gone to nsc from this okay okay i had some question but i'm clearing out what i meant was nsc is clearing out not nsc npa yeah i have some more question but i will follow that in the queue thank you sir thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of amit chandra from hdfc securities please go ahead Yes, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So, my question is uh, on the options profitability. So, obviously, after the SEBI uh, uh, fees uh, and the on uh, a price hike, uh, you know, the options profit, the options profitability has been impacted. And one of the prime reasons for that is the lower options valuation that we have versus NSE. So, uh, we earlier talked about uh, uh, you know the increase in the options valuation maybe on the non uh, on the on the non-expiry days. So, uh, you know, what steps uh, are we taking in terms of uh, increasing the uh, an premium to notional ratio? Uh, and also, is it fair to assume that with co-location coming in, uh, you know, the you know overall overall you know the depth will increase and we'll you know we'll see an increase in the premium to notional ratio. That's a very good question. Thanks for asking this. Uh, see the the. the the participants decide uh, which expiry is suitable for them to trade typically institutional participants tend to have a longer term view of the market so they like to talk about next week next to next week next month etc that's why our strategy has been to deepen and broaden the market using the institutional players and also some of the high frequency traders also have long term views where they tend to participate in the longer term products so we are encouraging such of those people who have a longer term view in the market and we are requesting them to deepen and broaden the market so that one the market itself becomes very stable two it really and clearly performs an economic purpose in the market three it improves the the premium quality as one would call of the notional to premium ratio these are the steps we are taking some of and we also feel that providing colo will be very helpful in this direction because many of the institutional players who like to come in and who have the objective of trading longer term products like to have a presence in colo to execute their strategies so these are conjoined together in that sense And sir, my second question is on the on the core SGF uh, part. So obviously we have seen a very sharp fall in the currency, you know, uh, like currency derivatives uh, volumes. And uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, 50% of our SGF is parked into the currency. And we in the last quarter also we contributed to it. So is it fair to assume that the future contribution to SGF can be uh, you know taken care of by shifting some of that? from currency uh, from one segment to another or, or uh, is it uh, because it's a very high amount and correspondingly in the fno uh, side we have very like low amount so is it uh, fair to assume that there can be a shift there see my understanding of the i am not an expert in core sgf because it comes from the clearing corporation side but my understanding of it it is uh, while if there is an increase it immediately kicks in when it has to taper down it takes time because the increase gets sustained in the system for quite some number of months before it even could be reworked to brought it down so while technically over a period of time this will be not required in currency because the volumes are coming down with the suitable and necessary regulatory approvals it can be reused towards other things other segments i will not presume that uh, because the volumes have fallen down in the last few weeks or few months uh, immediately the core sgf requirement will come down because it is based on peak over a period of time as you will understand so that is the way i look at it actually okay sir okay so thank you i will be back in the queue thank you
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Navdeep Singh Kundir, from who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Ramamurthy, first of all, uh, please accept my heartfelt gratitude for the kind of performance the company has delivered over the past one year. I have been a shareholder for six years almost, and uh, I am sure the business will only grow under your leadership. I have two small shareholder-related questions. Uh, our dividend payout ratio this year is close to 71%. Is there a change in the dividend policy? Because generally we get close to 100% of the standalone profits. Uh, you, there is there was no specified policy now, Devji, that we have to have a hundred percent dividend payout. Therefore, it was it is not a it is not a digression from the policy per se. But you are right. In the previous years, almost hundred percent was the dividend payout ratio. You are absolutely right there. Uh, this year, uh, as you know, in the in the last uh, few weeks, we were to take the stand of providing for a significant amount of our profits uh, towards the differential SEBI regulatory fee. And uh, we will be, of course, representing and requesting and appealing to the regulators. Uh, notwithstanding that, as a matter of prudence, we have provided for that has significantly diverted the profits from what could be available for distribution to be provisioned. And uh, from an uh, absolute number perspective, from 165 crores last year, we have paid this year 200 crores, 206 crores actually, which is around the 31, uh, sorry, 41 crores increase, which in itself from a dividend amount perspective around 25% increase in that sense, uh, which we are able to do. The balance 80 crores we have retained and taken to the reserves. As you know, we are also embarking on improving the market infrastructure for the ease of trading of people and also for providing more and more products. In order to build the infrastructure, we felt as again as a matter of prudence, some amount should be taken to reserves and well utilized towards infrastructure building. That was the reason why these numbers have been arrived at. Uh, thank you, sir. So one more question on a, one of our subsidiaries. The exchange we have with the gift city, uh, the volumes have kind of dwindled over the past one year since NSC has launched its uh, gift, gift nifty from there. So uh, is there any update on the merger which we are hearing? I mean, can you just provide us any information on that, sir? Uh, it's again a good question that you are asking. As you know, gift city is very, very close to our heart. It, uh, the India INX was the first exchange that has been uh, uh, that has been um, established with the, under the uh, under the guidance and under the uh, uh, under the guidance of Narendra Modi ji, our Prime Minister. We want this exchange to flourish and do very well. Yes, we are also taking note of the fact that the volumes are dwindling. We are going to develop our efforts to do whatever best we can in the interest of the nation, whereby Gift City continues to flourish and grow and more volumes come into the exchanges and gives a breather for life. We are at it and we will be working on it. Thank you. Thank, uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Aditya Jain from DNNS. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, am I audible? Yes, Aditya Jain. Yeah. Uh, con first of all, congratulations for the amazing performance. Uh, so, so uh, I have one question. Uh, so, BSC's major, major revenue increase has been because of derivatives volume in last one year. Uh, you have uh, spoken uh, in one of the questions that product stability is one of the key focus and then we are increasing the products. So, in derivative trading, uh, especially in Sensex, Bankex, so there were two dates when there were uh, 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 big slippages on the system. 2nd February 2024 and 12th April 2024. So uh, a lot of traders after these dates were saying that we don't want to trade in these particular products. So my question is, what was the issue on these two dates because of which stop loss which were there in the system did not get triggered? And second, is BSE doing anything to fix it and will it happen in future or not? NSC is relatively more stable in case of such events. So what is BSE's stance and what are we doing to fix it? It's a very good question that you are asking. On the two days that you mentioned, 
it is not the system stability because of which any of those things happened. When the market movement suddenly happens, in respect of an exchange where the order book is not very deep, when the stop loss orders get triggered because of the change in volatility profile, trades happen at whatever prices that are available in the order book and therefore you find the graph going slightly in a peak and then coming back to normalcy. It is not unique only for this product. In the last six, seven months, if you take every product available in every exchange has seen such behavior during the intraday volatility spurts. Having said that, in the interest of product stability, whether anything could be done to ensure that such peaks as it happens because of the volatility changes or market information coming in, how it could be sort of uh, smoothened, the curve how it can be smoothened when we look at it, we have introduced multiple actions in the area of surveillance the latest one is called as limit price protection. This was very two, three weeks before, I guess, we introduced it. We feel such type of measures are continuous and evolving, and we will continue to put our efforts to ensure that whatever best we can do to smoothen such movements. Market movement, sudden ups and sudden downs are not in our hands because they are market movements. But when they happen, the impact on the order book automatically becomes less if we deepen and broaden the market. It comes back to our theme. That is why more and more effort should be made to deepen and broaden the market, which we are doing. And second is, whatever additional thing that we can do, like a LPP, limit price protection, which we talked, that's the latest one. Earlier, again, we have done quite a few things, and it is evolving, as I said. We will be working on even providing more and more things wherever we come across some such possibility to prevent it from happening again, to whatever extent we can. Okay. So, so what I understand is it was a liquidity issue at depth, uh, at order, uh, at order book at depth level. No, and no, as no, more... no, 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 Aditya. It was a sudden volatility issue because of which when the market moves sharp, option prices move sharp. When it moves short, stop loss orders get triggered and eats away whatever liquidity is available in the market. So it is a volatility which makes it. If you could smoothen the curve by external protection measures like LPP, it helps. It is why we have put it. Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jayant. Karote from please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on a great set of uh, results. Just building on to the earlier discussion about uh, the data center and co-location piece, so if you could uh, outline how is the utilization tracking and, and at what level do you feel uh, you'll be comfortable to start monetizing this business, A, that, and B, in terms of growth, uh, let's say if you were to approach this monetization slightly slowly, um, uh, and you've added another 100 racks uh, as we understand in that 15 kVA uh, product. So, so what are the plans for the next one or two years? Where do you see this 200 number going uh, uh, over the next one year? Thank you, Jayanji, for this question. Uh, uh, if you may recall, when we started our journey 15 months before, we had around 100 racks. And DSE was not collecting any money from the members, and it was actually subsidizing the cost of the, the, the capital cost and the maintenance cost. When we started this derivatives, we said that we will, we will recover the cost associated with the co-location from the members and uh, so that we will not be out of pocket in respect of the existing uh, racks. So we started charging. Those charges were at a discount to the market charge at the point of time. Now, as the phase one, we have introduced new racks, brand new racks by incurring capital costs. 100 racks have come into existence. Some of them are 15 kVA racks for the first time in India, and others are 6 kVA racks like everybody else provides. 
So in order to ensure that we, uh, we are not out of pocket in respect of both the CapEx and OpEx, what now we have done is we have brought the colo rack rent on par with what is there in the market. Already the charges have started happening in respect of colo. What is not yet happening is the charges per message that comes into the colo system, which are applicable in other places, we have not levied. Probably we will not levy it immediately. We will again allow things to stabilize for some more time. And after some time, we will think of levying probably at first stage at a discount and then going full fledged like what we have been doing all along. So if you ask with regard to just the colo racks, yes, we have already, we will not say monetizing, we have already started collecting rent, which will ensure that we are breaking even and we are not out of pocket in respect of in all the racks, including the new racks. Uh, yes, sir. And just uh, to build on this question, uh, do you expect once you start levying on the messaging piece, your yield per rack uh, should match uh, uh, some of the other uh, peers in, 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 in this business? Will not, because others are charging uh, order messages for the messages as well, which I am not charging at this stage. So it will not match. It will be still at a discount. It will be still at a discount. I look at it this way, JNG. If there is a discount today, that means there is a scope for me to increase it further tomorrow. So that is the way I am looking at it. I'm sorry, you asked one question which I had not replied. That was, what where do we see if the numbers going in a, in a year or two? We already have plans of bringing in 150 more racks if there is a market demand for which we have identified place. If that also gets consumed, then we will further increase it dependent on the demand and at that time we will find the place and do it. So clearly we are looking at the market for the demand so that timely we will provide a supply. Well, there will be some gap between demand and supply naturally because it's an evolving area. But as we promised earlier that we are building the new racks and we will give it to you and today hopefully we are allotting it, we will do the same thing once there is a demand building up we will meet it with the supply. Great, great. Thanks and congratulations once again, sir. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepak Kumar Achmera from IGE India Family Office. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Good evening. Um, till now, uh, we, BSC and NSC, uh, what we think was working in collaboration I think we have lost the uh, closing connection. Uh, sorry for that. Just give me a moment. Let me uh, just try and reconnect that. Yes, Deepak Kumar, please go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Now we can. Yeah, so I was saying that uh, till now, uh, NSC and BSC, we thought uh, working in collaboration. Friday and Monday was exclusive to BSC. Now NSC has launched uh, Nifty Next 50 on Friday and that too without any charge. So isn't it that will, um, that will um, eat uh, lots of uh, uh, volume which is there on BSC? Would like to have your view. Uh, the, the number of products uh, cannot remain just at five in a week because there are only five days in a week. At some point of time, there have to be more number of products. I always look at it this way. Uh, I look at it as going to a restaurant and ordering only one dish. And second is going to a restaurant where a buffet spread is there and choosing whatever we want to eat and eat. When it is a restaurant which is supplying only one dish, initially there will be a lot of demand because there will be no other restaurant. But over a period of time, people will start preferring a buffet so that they can eat whatever they want. Uh, this analogy is what comes to my mind, though it is a very crude analogy I accept. Uh, so over a period of time, I think more and more products will come in. So more and more products on a single day will continue to be there. And people will be choosing whatever for that day they need to hedge whatever positions they have 
so that every product will start functioning effectively and doing a very good economic role for the market. That's the way I think the market will evolve. So this time the success on um, FNO uh, product is because of different day only. And if uh, the different day itself is not there, um, means the um, the market share uh, which we are gaining is largely due to different day. This is the difference in the strategy earlier compared to earlier where BSE has tried and couldn't succeed. So. The success is there because of different day, and now the different day is not there exclusively. So we that's the concern. No, you are perfectly right. Initially, the product differentiation in respect of Sensex, which made market participants to look at it, absolutely came because it had an expiry, which did not clash with any expiry, and therefore helped in optimal use of the capital. You are absolutely right there. But since the product has gained momentum now, now there will be room for people to, in any case, concentrate on Sensex and also look at other products that are coming in and use it effectively. The one great advantage of the indices that we have launched till now, they have great correlation with the other indices that are in the market. For example, if you take Bankex, of course, it has 100% correlation with itself. And bank X correlation with Fin Nifty is around 97%. Bank X correlation with Sensex and Nifty is around 94%. Bank X correlation with Bank Nifty is around 99.898%. So clearly, therefore, such a great amount of correlation in itself lends room for a lot of strategies to evolve. That's what I meant when I said the, the buffet example. There will be quite a few strategies evolving where when a new product gets involved, it gets introduced, if they are having significant levels of correlation like this, actually the existing product will grow along with the new product, helping the new product also to grow. That's the way I am looking at it. Noted, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Best research. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we would take that as our last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Anand Sejaraman for closing comments. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us on this call. Uh, if you have any further questions, please feel free to write, write to us at bse.ir at bsenia.com. Uh, we'll be happy to take your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. On behalf of BSE Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.